Good day, collectors and viewers. Social Distance Warrior is back. And today we're going to look at our original Star Wars Cantina patron, Snaggletooth. Now, Snaggletooth made his debut back in the original Star Wars movie, A New Hope, in 1977. Um, of course, nobody was prepared for the success, unprecedented success of that movie and series. Uh, so we wouldn't get action figures right away. We'd have to wait for the following year. And uh, first we had the original figures released, and then Snaggletooth followed suit soon enough. Now, he didn't follow suit the way we actually think he did. He actually came out in a Sears-exclusive Cantina Adventure set in 1978 first. He came as an exclusive figure in that set, and he was a tall, blue alien figure. Um, not many people will have this figure. It's, of course, more of a rarer set because he was corrected later on. But uh, that was the original release. And, of course, he didn't appear as that blue cantina alien in the movies. So somebody goofed somewhere in the production photos and made that action figure and made him at the wrong scale as well. So we'd have to wait a year, but in 1979, we'd finally get the corrected on-screen version of Snaggletooth on our Star Wars 20 back. And so I have that carded card back for the character over here. We'll bring that forward. So as we can see over here, we see the Star Wars name pill there. And we see the nice little picture of Luke and Leia. To the right over here, nice name pill there, Snaggletooth. And there's a picture of him posing in the cantina uh, in his outfit and that nice, you know, um, pig-like mask that he's got there. Of course, my is not carded, unfortunately. See, this figure has been removed and loved <laughs> to be played with over the years. There's the nice Kenner logo there on the bottom. Now, you can see here up on the top pricing. I know people like to see this kind of stuff as well. Uh, this figure was from purchased from Canadian Tire, and its original price was $277. And then it was marked down on sale, clearance. And that is $1.39. So almost half price there, as we can see. Um... It's, it always amazed me. They gave you a spot here on the card back to put the price tag, but for some reason, people at the store didn't care and they would stick it over here. And that's probably because no one expected these things to be wanted or worth something years later or loved by anybody else. But as we can see with me filming this video 40 plus years later and you watching, we do care. And these are the sort of things that we love to see that nostalgia taking over something as prominent and as amazing as Star Wars. So that's the front of the card back. Let's flip that around to the back. As we can see here on the back, this is a obviously multilingual card back here from Canada. Uh, we do see it's a 20 back, so we can see the 20 figures that came with, the original figures here up on the bottom, and then of course the, the newer ones that were added here on the top. Uh, and Snaggletooth is one of those guys there. And then of course here on the bottom part, these are these card backs. I used to be able to stare at these things for hours. It's like a toy catalog and, I, uh, catalog. and I'd look at it and I'd dream about what if I had that figure and look how amazing that is with the pose. And I'd take him outside and play with him like Obi-Wan is there in the dirt and make it look like he's in a cavern. Uh, over here we can see there is the you know mini action figure collector's case as well as the cantina playset. Uh, land of the Jawas, and of course the back here on the bottom, and then there's those notorious Prusa purchase, purchases that would get cut out of these card backs and sent in for mail away figures. So that's the card back for Snaggletooth. Let's have a look at the figure himself. Let's make his debut here. So here he is, 40 plus years later. Snaggletooth, this one of course always fascinated me as a kid. Uh, not only did Star Wars, you know, whet my appetite with you know, space stormtroopers and an evil Darth Vader and a hero like Luke Skywalker with a lightsaber and Han Solo, Princess Leia, but we'd have droids and alien creatures. And then the amazing thing is I loved Jawas and I loved Snaggletooth because they were shorter in scale, right? A shorter figure. They had they came in all sorts and size uh all sorts of sizes, these figures did. All shapes and sizes, and Snaggletooth is one of those guys. And he's just an amazing figure. Now, the first thing that always stands out to me looking at this character is they initially made him as that big, tall, blue snaggletooth. That probably explains why his arms are very long. So his arms are long there, but then his feet are short. But that original figure, of course, scale-wise, having the long arms made more sense because the legs were long as well. So that's probably a goof-up or typo somewhere where they changed it. But nonetheless, it's nice to have both versions if you do have them. 
Uh, we take a close-up here of his head. We can see the nice sculpting, standing the test of time 40 plus years later. He's got the tusks there, giving, the, giving him the name uh, Snaggletooth. Of course, the tooth sticking out, the nice eyes with the little white dot pupils on there and nostrils and of course the gray skin and he's even got his own little hair haircut hairstyle on there so there is articulation of course there on the head we can turn that side to side snaggle tooth and then of course at the arms here we can lift them up and we can lift up the legs there as well we can see he's got the little foot peg there underneath now let's have a look at his blaster we're just going to remove that there so a lot of the action figures came with the accessories and he came in with that same blaster as Han Solo, that DL-44 blaster. Now, these are the parts, the, it's funny, these accessories are sometimes worth more than these action figures because they're so easy to lose. And it's not easy to hold on to one of these things. It's probably the most uncommon thing to have if you have a used action figure that's not in the package. It's usually missing accessories. So uh, they're a hot commodity. And of course, there's lots of repro stuff out there, but... I'm not a repro guy, it's all got to be all original stuff, and that's an original blaster there, so you can see how nice that was, and it fits nicely in his hand. Now, the figure himself, we can take a nice close-up of him there in the front, and then if we lift him up, we can see foot pegs there on the bottom, okay? Nicely painted belt here, turn him to the side, that's what we get from Snaggletooth there with his nice big long arms, and then from the back as well, and then on the back here, if we lift the leg up, we can see that it says uh, Hong Kong and it's got the little name stamp on there. It's hard to see, but it is there. So that is Snaggletooth. That's the original release that we got back in 1979. So let's put him back over here and let's see where we go next. So we'd have to wait a number of years to get another Snaggletooth. Um, this is a confusing one because Star Wars came back in the 90s and we had the Power of the Force 2 bring back the action figures. And then Snaggletooth wasn't featured in that original batch of figures. In fact, we wouldn't get a Cantina Alien version of a Snaggletooth uh, character until 1998. So three years into that Power of the Force 2 line, they had cinema scenes where you could get three figures in one scene. And they usually put characters in there that they weren't going to release on single card. And of course, the Snaggletooth species was one of them. Um, it's an interesting one because on the package, his name is Tequil. And then at the time in the 90s, I'm not sure if it was the late 80s or, or 90s, they started giving the Star Wars aliens names and they gave the species names as well. And it turns out that there was more than one character of this alien that played Snaggletooth in the cantina. One of them was, uh, Snaggletooth was Zutton. And then this character, who I'm going to bring up over here now, his name was Tequil. But every depiction we have of Snaggletooth looks more like this guy than the character that we have as Snaggletooth. And there's a reason for that. Because this is the guy that we'd see on screen, as you can see on the, on the packaging back over here. That's the character that you'd blip and miss on screen. But the other character over here, that's Snaggletooth, that we got in the initial action figure form, and that picture that you see there... That's from the Star Wars Holiday Special. So uh, as we go through, we'll kind of find out a little more history on him. But let's have a look at Tequila here. I still consider him Snaggletooth because that's all we got at the time until the 2000s. So lo and behold, in 1998, we'd get a character from the cantina that we could use as our Snaggletooth. And he looked a lot different. He is hunched. So he's got one area here that's hunched on his shoulder. And he's in totally different garb, totally different outfit than that original character came in. And that used to... You know, and I wouldn't say confuse me, but I'd say, you know, alert me a little bit as a collector at the time, why they couldn't just make that original character because we didn't have enough uh, media to, to discuss these different scenarios or options on them. So as far as the head sculpt, you can see the head sculpt is nice. It's got come a long way from that original one, but they've given them, you know, definitely a lighter share, sh shade of brown on that head. It's not dark and uh, his pupils aren't painted. It's just two big black eyes. He does have the tusk there on one side. Uh, he's got a nice little shawl here coming down. We can turn his head side to side. He does have articulation there, okay? As far as the arms, they do go up and down. But he's got that weird hunch, so one of them is straight, and then one of them is curved over here. Uh, like the characters at the time, toys did on the Power of the Force 2, there is added waist articulation, so you can turn him to the side. And it's almost like he's ready to hold the drink over here in this hand. 
and sit at the cantina bar. So he's definitely a nice welcome addition. He does have the top, the bottom part of his top over here coming down uh, below his waist. And as a result, you can't sit him. Kind of, you can basically bring his leg up that far. If you tried to sit him, you're just going to warp this bottom part of the skirt. So I have him standing in my scene, but he's definitely in the cantina because there was more than one of these guys. Uh, as far as down here on the legs, uh, he does have different colored boots as well. If we turn them up, we can see underneath there. He does have a foot peg on one side, not on the other side. There is like an imprint of a foot peg in there, but it was never punched out. And it does say uh, Kenner China, and it does say 19, uh, 90, 1998 there on the bottom. Okay? So that's what Snaggletooth or Tequil looks like from the front. That's what he looks like from the side. And that's what he looks like from the back. So that's what we got in 1998 as part of that cinema scene, Cantina Aliens. So the next time, the next version we get of Snaggletooth would be in 2001 as part of the Power of the Jedi line. So the Power of the Jedi line came out after the first prequel movie, which was Star Wars The Phantom Menace. And of course, it merged the lines together. They came went under one banner. And then they had a mix of figures, and it was nice. We finally got an update to our Snaggletooth, and he was shorter in scale. So that's fig this figure over here. Now, this is an awesome one. It's a favorite of mine. He stood the test of time even today. Um, you can see his sculpts come a long way. They've added some articulation on there. Uh, I do have his drinking glass. He did come with a drinking glass as well. And it's a much more accurate head sculpt than that original figure was or the one that we got reissued or or issued in the 90s as well so we can see his head sculpt there is a lot more accurate you can see how far the sculpting has come on these characters we'll turn that head all the way around just so you can see him from the side there as well in the back and he's got a lot thicker hair and the hair is gray uh we can that head's got articulation you can turn that side to side now like a lot of figures were at the time this one's got some pre-posed sculpting on there and this arm unfortunately uh, is bent at the elbow here, and that's the fixed position for him to hold his drink. So all you can really do there is go up and down with that hand. It can't do much more. I don't want to lose that drink in there. Let's keep it. And, of course, articulation here at the waist, we can turn him side to side as well. At the waist there, so you can see that. Oh, looks like he's lost his drink. We'll look at that in a sec. Um, he does have an accessory here as well. He does have this gun blaster that he comes with. We can have a look at that up close as well. Now, a lot of the accessories started getting painted with details, so it's got more than one paint op operation on there, which is nice. Gives it much more realism with the scope. And a figure started coming with sockets on their legs as well, where you can put these accessories. And Duros was one of them, and as was the Biker Scout as well. And then I love that. It was a nice little added feature that you'd have on your action figures, and that just goes into the leg there. Mine's not going in there very easily, but that's where that goes. And the leg and the boot. As far as the articulation from the waist down, you can see the legs move up. And then he has articulation here at the knees, so you can bend his knees. Okay, that's an added feature. And of course, as a result, you can have him sitting in your cantina, which is amazing. Finally, we can pose these figures with a little bit more um, realism in our cantina. Have him sitting, not just standing. And of course, underneath there, we can see his foot pegs. Okay. And it says 2001 Lucasfilm Limited, Hasbro, China, underneath the legs there. So that's Snaggletooth here from the front. There's his nice little holster on his boot there. That's what he looks like from the side. Okay, and then you can see the look of him on the back here as well. And really nice paint operations uh, on the figure as well. It goes all the way around. They didn't cheap out and not paint the back. They've painted that jumpsuit all the way through. And the belt as well. And there's a nice little, you know, accents there around it. Like the original one had in the picture there. It's like a little, almost a gold trim going around that blue. So that's on there as well. And it's funny, I have this guy, because I have the a later version of Snaggletooth, I have this one posed in my sail barge to give it a little more flavor with aliens in there. And uh, he's definitely a nice action figure. And if you don't have him, I recommend picking him up. And that was the Snaggletooth that we got in 2001. Okay, so we'd fast forward a few years to 2004. And one thing I really love about this hobby is that there's lots of activity and passion from fans on the fan channels. And it's nice when the toy designers and, and the companies pay attention to them and try to 
fulfill requests for action figures and they did for us at the time because everybody was always clamoring for and asking for a new blue snaggle tooth and hasbro i hope that you're listening now because we definitely love an update to that in the vintage collection today but at the time in 2004 they released an original trilogy collection cantina screen scene there was two scenes released with three figures each and they came with the whole section of the bar and blue snaggle tooth was released in one of those and those were kmart exclusives course uh, i didn't have access to a kmart up here in canada because they haven't been existing over here for a number of years so i had to get mine off of ebay but i got them for pretty cheap at the time because the figures didn't go for as much as they do now so i picked up my blue snaggle tooth and of course i was ecstatic to finally have a blue snaggle tooth and that's this guy over here so he's basically a kip bash figure that incorporates that original snaggle tooth from the power of the jedi line that we got and then, of course, gives him longer legs so that he's uh, a little more accurate to what that original figure would look like in height and in sculpt as well. So he's an awesome figure. Uh, they've used different arms on here. I think it's Kip Bashed. It looks like with uh, Ponda Baba's body and uh, arms and legs from that Cantina screen scene as well. Because you can see on the side of the jacket here, he does have, you know, the ribbed parts of the jacket. And, of course, he does have that uh, extra articulation where you can move him just above the elbow over here to reenact that Ponda Baba getting his arm cut off, except, you know, Snaggletooth never got his arm cut off. So it was awesome to get a blue version of him. Actually, I kept him in package for many, many years because I loved the whole look of that scene. And then one day I just couldn't take it anymore and I had to open him up and have a look at him in person and put him in my cantina. So there's a nice look at the head sculpt. You can see it's basically the same thing as that Power of the Jedi figure that we had there. Okay, and then as far as the outfit itself, he doesn't have the paint operations or uh, operations that, or the, like the Power of the Jedi one did over here. They just went with a straight blue jacket. Uh, they painted his belt nicely and they put a nice silver, you know, symbol, the like buckle there on the front. Uh, articulation on the arms. The arms, of course, do go up and down. And of course, just like Ponda Baba, he does have that extra articulation there, which is nice. Uh, he does have waist articulation, so you can turn him side to side which is awesome. And of course, down below the waist here, his legs can go up and he does have, this one's a little loose already. You can see they came this way, loose. Uh, articulation here at the knees so you can sit him down at the cantina. And then if he's got those infamous silver boots like that original figure had, so that was a nice little addition. It's almost like a, like a 70s uh, disco vibe to it. So that's what he looks like from the front there, Snaggletooth. And then we lift them up underneath. We can see his foot pegs there. And it does say uh, Hasbro China. And it does say, two, there's a stamp there saying 2002. Because he's reusing uh, some parts there from Ponda Baba. So that's what he looks like from the front. We turn him over to the side. We, that's what he looks like from the side. You can see that he is a taller version. And then that's what he looks like from the back. So that was the addition we had of the blue snaggle tooth. And the only modern snaggle, blue snaggle tooth that we have. And if we're lucky, maybe we'll get one of the vintage collections someday or as part of a playset. That would be great if they ever make a Cantina playset. That would be the ultimate figure that you could put in there. And I'm sure a lot of people would eat that up and pick them up. Okay, so we fast forward a number of years and Hasbro decides to release the vintage collection. So vintage collection is premium versions of, you know, our Star Wars characters on the original card backs. And uh, obviously we were all hopeful that we're going to get every single character released, but we didn't. And before that line ended, they released a bunch of multi-packs of figures to pay homage to the original designs that they had back in the 80s as well. And there was like a droid set, there was a hero set, and then there was a villain set. And the villain set came with Boba Fett, a Tusken Raider, which was named Sand People, and of course a brand new version of Snaggletooth. Now, he was an exclusive, I believe a Target exclusive down in the States. We didn't have Target up here in Canada. And as a result, I wasn't able to acquire the figure. And to date, I had every single Cantina alien that was ever released. Of course, I need a new Snaggletooth. That's no question. So I wasn't able to acquire the set and I'd have to wait a number of years. And of course, I ended up getting the figure. But thankfully, when they re-released the Vintage Collection in 2021, we finally got Snaggletooth, or his name Zutton, on a Star Wars card back. And obviously that was 
a dream come true. I would have loved to, to prefer to have that Snaggletooth name pill on there, but I'll settle for the Zutton, and that's him over here on card. Let's bring him forward. Uh, it looks amazing on the card back, the original Star Wars card back. You can see they've the name pill is awesome. The Star Wars logo there is awesome. The Kenner logo there is amazing. You can see the figure sits nicely in that bubble with a nice yellow background. And uh, he does have his blaster over here on the side as well. So that's what, you know, Zutton or Snaggletooth looks like from the front. Flip that over to the back just to see the back there. And we can see that he's VC number 189. And there's some other figures that were available as well at the time that this figure came out. And a bunch of legal mumbo jumbo over here at the bottom taking up the rest of the packaging. So that's the carded version of Snaggletooth slash Zutton. And here's the release open release of him okay off card now this is exactly the same figure as the one that came out in 2012 uh they've updated a few updated a few things on him here uh on the initial release of this figure they didn't paint the joints in between they were always different colors and as a result it created a problem when you're trying to sit your figure down or pose them and they just an eyesore when it's not painted properly but i do have the corrected version over here most of it's painted until you actually pull the 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 ankle up too high and then you'll notice that you can still see the red color underneath there so he's an amazing sculpt uh definitely an amazing upgrade uh now this guy although he's zutton resembles to which is the other um snivian uh species character that was in the cantina he's got that sloped shoulder on the side there yeah uh, he doesn't have the shawl or the scarf sitting in the front but it's almost the same garb as this one over here without that look of the other uh, Snaggletooth that we're used to because the other Snaggletooth was the holiday special version. So I I wish they can release that holiday special version as well in the vintage card because that one's more reminiscent of the original Snaggletooth that we know and love. So let's put this guy back over here. So that's what he looks like. He's fully articulated there from the front. We'll have a nice little close-up of the head. We can see how far we've come with sculpting. There's that nice tooth sticking out the side of his mouth there he's smiling uh, he's got nice dark black eyes he's got the nostrils we can see what it looks like from the side he looks a lot more like a, like an ape or like a chimpanzee from the side there then he does uh the more uh reminiscent look pig like look that he had on the original one but definitely a nice update and of course the dark hair running all the way along the back and of course we can see his little hunchback over here on the side now as far as articulation he does have swivel here up at the shoulder. You can move that arm any way you want there. He does have it at the elbow as well. They've gone all out. And of course, at the wrist here, you can turn that back and forth as well. And he is holding that uh, DL44 blaster like the original one came with. Okay, so they haven't missed that opportunity. I'm going to show you something special with that in a second. Let's just take that gun out of his hand so we can have a nice close-up look at it. So that's the more modernized look version of that gun, but it doesn't have any barrel painted it's just a straight black they cheaped out a little bit on that paint job which is unfortunate because vintage collection should be full um full paint work and everything these should these should be amazing on package and open as well uh, it would have been nice to see him come with a cup as well he doesn't come with a cup like that power of the jedi version did but that's his blaster uh articulation here at the waist so we can turn him side to side as well okay he does have a skirt or the part of his robe that's sticking down up on down below his waist and there is a nice little slit on it here so that gives you an option to sit him down it makes it a little more easier to sit him down you can lift that leg up we can see uh down here that he does have articulation here at the knees as well okay and you can see they're the right color which is nice so you can have him sitting and of course that gives you the opportunity to do a lot more with his character and of course here at the ankles as well and i was just telling you how mine was painted properly but the paint's basically disappearing as i lift that uh, as i move the ankle down so i can see that it wasn't fully painted in there like i thought it was so once i'm up in that position though you can see that it is painted you can't tell so that's uh his look there underneath of course he does have his foot pegs let's have a look at him from the front okay Snaggletooth from the front. You can see he's a nice weathered paint job on him there. And then underneath, of course, is two foot pegs. And it does say uh, 2012 Lucasfilm Limited underneath there. So that's from that original release, the original sculpt that came in that three pack. And then if we turn him to the side, that's what he looks like from the side. 
And if we turn to the back, that's what he looks like from the back. And then you're looking at him from the back and you're like, is that a button there? Is that an, an action feature that you didn't talk about yet? No, it's not. It's actually a holster to hide his gun. So he stores his gun here in the back, not in the front, which is actually nice. It's completely different from any other action figure. Uh, when you don't have the gun in there, it looks horrible. When you have the gun in there, it definitely gives it a different look to the figure. I like it. I actually think that it's a, it's nice to see a holster in a spot that you don't expect it as opposed to where you do expect it. So they add that little hidden feature there on the back of this character and that's a nice little addition that makes him unique. So that's the Snaggletooth that we got or Zutton that we got as part of the Vintage Collection first in 2012 and then of course in 2021 as part of the Vintage Collection. And that is our ultimate version of Zutton slash Snaggletooth. The only thing missing that we could get that would be awesome to have is of course a version of um, Snaggletooth in the blue outfit. So, the, And then of course one that's reminiscent of the one from the holiday special that looks just like the one that we got originally back in 1979. So that's it for Snaggletooth. Hope you guys have enjoyed the review. Uh, please like and subscribe and look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. Take care.